President Biden left Americans behind in Afghanistan, and now his administration is being accused of stealing credit for getting people out. The State Department says it helped facilitate the safe departure of a stranded American mother and her three kids. But Army veteran Corey Mills and his team, who risked their lives to bring them to safety, say the federal government had very little to do with it. That comes as the Taliban's reportedly preventing at least six planes at an airport in northern Afghanistan from taking off. Secretary of State Tony Blinken claims the Taliban's not blocking Americans from leaving and says the Biden administration is working with the terror group. They've said that they will let people with travel documents freely depart. We will hold them to that. So will dozens of other countries. The international community is watching to see if the Taliban will live up to their commitments. Without personnel on the ground, we can't verify the accuracy of manifests, the identities of passengers, flight plans, or aviation security protocols. So this is a challenge. And if you think the situation is bad in Afghanistan now, General Mark Milley says things could get a lot worse. My military estimate is, is that the conditions are uh, likely to develop uh, of a civil war. I, do, I don't know if the Taliban is going to be able to consolidate power and establish governance. I think there's at least a, a very good probability uh, of a broader civil war, and that will then in turn lead to conditions that could, in fact, lead to a reconstitution of al-Qaeda or a growth of ISIS or other myriad of terrorist groups. So, Judge Blinken, got to be the worst Secretary of State in my lifetime. And I was alive for John Kerry. You know what? I think he's the worst Secretary of State <laughs> ever. <laughs> if, you've got, if you've got a Secretary of State who's more worried about whether or not we're a racist nation and running to the U.N. and saying, at a time when he should be worrying about this, he should be worrying about our exit from Afghanistan, he should be yelling from the roofs, you've got to get my people out before you get the military out. And instead, he's over at the U.N. diddling on this whole issue of, you know, we're a racist nation. Help us convince ourselves we're racist. The guy's a liar. I don't believe a word he says. He says that the Taliban is, is agreeing or facilitating the movement of America's out of there. He's wrong. He's a liar. You lie once, you, you have the absolute right to believe they're lying again. That's what I used to tell juries all the time, and that's the case right now. Harold Ford, so Biden team saying, uh, we're not aware of, you know, any stranded Americans. We're not aware of this. Well, they weren't aware of the Taliban takeover either. So either they don't know it's happening and it's happening or they're lying about it. That's why their credibility is shot. Well, first, it's good to be back at the table. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, good to be with you, Harold. And good to see the magnanimity. You really missed a couple yeah. good weeks, didn't you? The magnanimity has not left. The, uh, uh, I'd say a couple things. Judge, I differ, I differ slightly. If you'd have told me on August 24th that we would have gotten 120,000 Americans out, I would have disputed it. In fact, I came on another show in our network to be critical of how things had, had taken place and how they'd unfolded. Now, this doesn't mean that oversight should take place. There are going to be Democrats in the House and the Senate who've already called for it, as a matter of fact, for us to figure out what happened, why it happened, even some Democrats saying, how could we spend a trillion dollars in the military and the security forces in Afghanistan run like they did and not be prepared? I think we'll get answers and Democrats will hold them accountable as well. But I don't lose sight of the fact that we still did the right thing by leaving. And Secretary Blinken, um, I, don't, I, I disagree with the characterization about him being the worst Secretary of State. I think there's a lot of frustration. There's Who's a worse? lot of anger. Who's worse? Oh, no, there, there's a lot of anger. Look, there's, a, there's a competition for worse, and we, we can have another show to deal with that. But I think that they have done, um, they didn't do everything right, and there's no doubt they will be held accountable. But when you look at where we are today, we have to make sure anyone we get out of there tomorrow or the following days, we need to vet them. I think that there is no doubt there have been those on this network and others who have showed, who said that there's no reason in the world why we should not be extra careful after we've gotten all of our Americans out, that anyone wanting to come now, we have to make sure they indeed but, but, are ones who helped us and that their security, their security vetting the is... You're jumping the issue. The, the issue to get out, everybody agrees on. The issue of vetting, everybody agrees on. Right. The hairy issue that we all agree on at this table, I think, is that they did it in the most hasty and un, unsafe way they could have. 
13 servicemen are dead, men and women are dead, because they were like sitting ducks in an open area in a cosmopolitan city instead of the Bagram Air Base, because they made a political decision and not a military decision. Judge, I don't agree with you. I don't disagree with you. That's not what Jesse asked me. I happen to think that there were mistakes made all along the way. I, uh, General Milky, as well as uh, uh, Secretary Austin, have both said that. We will get to the bottom of that. There will come a time to do that. But at this point, I agree with all around the table. How do we get people out? Say Safely, and how do we ensure that they're vetted before they come here and then let the chips fall where they may be in terms of accountability? All right, so the Democrat editors, Dana, at the New Yorker magazine are saying Democrats in the Biden State Department are blocking Americans from leaving Afghanistan. How will the fact checkers resolve that? What do you do when that happens? What do you do? Like, that is so hard. <laughs> it's so hard. You might take a day off. That might be what you do. Um, we're in this bizarre dystopian situation where the Biden administration is trying to, to like pretend that this crisis isn't happening. They, I know they want to focus on other things. We're going to talk about that in a later block. But um, Americans stuck in Afghanistan, because of your actions, that does not mean they are a political inconvenience. Okay? They are stuck, and they need help. And then we're having this weird semantic debate about what is a hostage. Imagine this. If you are on a plane in Afghanistan, or, or in, in Afghanistan, you have a plane. You want to leave. You are cleared to leave. You have the paperwork to leave. And the Taliban won't let you leave. What would you consider yourself? Stranded. And a hostage. Oh, Who's almost got it the right. Taliban. <laughs> <laughs> the Taliban. We're going to get back in sync. The Taliban <laughs> is preventing them from leaving. Like, so you can imagine, let's just say things were reversed. Let's say this were president under President Trump's watch and the very same things happened. What do you think Chuck Schumer would be saying today? He'd hostage be saying that, the, that you 30. created a hostage crisis and they would be banging the drums on that. The other thing I would say is we didn't get 120,000 Americans out. We didn't right. get all the Americans out. We got 120,000 people, people out. Correct. But we only got 7% of the interpreters and the helpers of the Americans out. Right. That is what I think. That's what I think is a real moral outrage. Yeah, so 93% of the guys that came no over just basically got to the front of the line no fastest. Connection. And none of the service dogs. <laughs> and none of the dogs. Right. None of the dogs, Greg. Well, a lot but, of the dogs have come back. Well, but some well, well stay, yeah. fact checkers. I just was very impressed with, with the too. with the first question that you came out with. Is he the worst secretary <laughs> of state ever? Because it actually created a debate that we had to accept that that was out there. It would be like me saying, "Am, am I the greatest talk show host ever?" You have to, people are asking that question. Yeah, yeah, not me. That's right. Not me. But some people. First of all, to your to your point about like, well, the people being in Afghanistan, the Americans, that's their choice. That's like a doctor saying to a patient that after a patient died to the family, well, you know, he was a smoker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you know, he was a couple of pounds overweight. So, you know, they're like basically kind of saying it's on them. Yeah, we put out 19 State Department cables. We told them to come, you know, and then, but there are people disputing that. Also, can we ban the phrase, finally, the world is watching? Because <laughs> nobody cares if the yeah. world is watching. The entire, you know, the entire Taliban government right now is has not a single non-Taliban -ta member, right? And they're still beating the crap out of people in protests or going around doing nasty things. So the whole world is watching means nothing if you don't do anything after you're watching. It's like people who hold up smartphones while you're being attacked. It's like, could you help me? <laughs> Put down the phone and help me, you big jerks. This is, it goes back to, everybody agrees. The decision we were into, the implementation, awful. This is so royally screwed up. It's almost impossible to unscrew it. It's like a car accident. You can't reverse it and get the car back, right? You just hope that the insurance company will total it so you don't ever get that car that never is quite the same. So I think that, like, there's no way to undo this. So now we're kind of... All, we, and we didn't... We didn't accept this, but we're now along for the ride. There's no choice. Yeah. There's like, when you see the general not even sure, nobody even knows precisely how many Americans are there. They're not even sure what's going on. And we're, so we have to be there. I mean, we just have to sit there and deal with it. We have no intel. We're told uh, what the Taliban are doing by, by the Taliban. And we're telling them what we want. Please don't hurt the Americans and we'll reward you. So we're the first nation in history to actually extort ourselves. I, hey, I'm yes. sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I had one more thing, but I bet it was great. But I'll save it for one more thing. I was just going yeah. to add one thing about to what you were just saying there. The 
uh, on the world is watching. Yeah. Today, when the Taliban announced their government and their cabinet, they're like all on the UN terrorism watch list. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, exactly. Is the world watching? Who cares if the world's watching? Yes. Who's the world anyway? Exactly. Well, I don't want to name specific countries. I've gotten in trouble for that before. But we know who we're talking the about. The world as an entity is overrated. Right. If you talk to any space alien. Have you seen the world? <laughs> Not too good. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.